Blue Heron is where a, a mining community once was established from the 1930s up to the 1960s. During that time, hundreds of people lived and worked in this area. There was school, there was a church, uh, homes, a general store. It was very self-contained. And uh, in the 60s, it was uh, shut down because it was a no longer a, a, a profitable business. And although the original structures are, are no longer here, there are today uh, a, about a dozen what are called ghost structures where particular buildings once sat. And these ghost structures tell you a lot about the, the purpose of those structures and they also have an audio tour that can, you can listen to that will play story and information by people who were actually here about the significance of these particular places. Tonight is our sixth annual ghost train and the ghost train as well as next weekend is our 24th annual storytelling festival. Basically it's a week of storytelling and we're celebrating uh, the, the art of storytelling. Storytelling was a very big part of this area as, as well as human history itself. It was used for uh, the purpose of passing down information, entertainment, and a, and a variety of historical uh, information to, to family and, and friends. And we carry on and honor that tradition of storytelling by uh, hosting our, our, our ghost train and our storytelling festival. Uh, visitors get to go to different parts of the Blue Heron community, uh, the former Blue Heron community, and, and hear really interesting folk stories about the area and uh, the coal mining history itself. And as I was carrying him out of the room, well, I'm going to be given the opportunity to tell one story, which is actually like a round robin. And my story, it's actually one of my very favorites. It's about a husband and a wife that have been married for several years and they actually just despise each other. So my story is a little bit of an argument between the two and he gets sick. And after he gets sick, after just a few short days, the wife decides that this is her chance to get rid of him. So she decides to poison him. And uh, that's where the story ensues. It's a very interesting story. It's a little bit of lightheartedness and a little bit of a scare at the end that the young people and old as well really like. I'll come back for you, he said breathlessly. But about that time, Lucinda heard something. I'm actually a volunteer, a, a story volunteer for the Big South Fork. And uh, this is my sixth year, and I have enjoyed it tremendously. Well, this is a special place. I don't think that there's a person in McCrary County that hasn't been touched uh, with their relatives working in some facet in the blue hair and mines. Uh, my grandfather worked for the Stearns Company. He was a surveyor. So it's definitely been a part of my life, all of my growing up. Our mission of the Park Service is to um, protect these significant places that tell our human story as well as providing for uh, recreation and enjoyment. We have an, an important and powerful responsibility to, to provide that, um, that to, to visitors who oftentimes are here just for a hike. Sometimes they're here to learn about why these places are so, are so special. And so we have a very important responsibility to um, serve both of those visitors, like I said, for, for just recreation or for um, uh, educational purposes. To have a national park here in McCrary County, I think that it is a terrific uh, opportunity for the people of McCrary County to have some place to go, as well as others that are not so familiar with the beauty of McCrary County. We have a very low population, but the beauty of McCrary County, I mean, I don't think that there is a more beautiful place in the United States. We have so many places to hike, the rapids. It's, it's just a wonderful, beautiful place if you enjoy the outdoors. Big South Fork is, it has something for everyone. If you're into the outdoors, we have it for you. If you enjoy hunting, 
fishing, hiking, mountain biking, you name it, it's available. It is very important for us to create that next generation of park stewards and users and enthusiasts and have them embrace the power and the significance of the National Park Service. I think that if we don't, I think these past efforts during the last 100 years will be in vain. I think that in order to be compelled to protect something, you really need to care for it. And if we don't get the next generation to care for these places, they, they won't be compelled to care for it. And I think it's very important for us to create that next generation who will care for these places and build upon the legacy that, that has taken place for the last 100 years. All you have to do is look at the beauty around you. I mean, my goodness, it's taken years to, uh, to come this far. Just look at the trees, the, listen to the birds singing, the waters that are running behind us. I mean, this is truly a beautiful area. And if you are touched by the beauty, you have to be touched by the spirit.